Jeremy with Practical IT. In this episode, we're going to be talking about ViOS, which is a fork of Viata. And it is very similar to the environment you're going to experience from the command line on Ubiquity Edgemax devices. As you may know, Ubiquity forked Viata uh, before Brocade bought Viata and has continued to develop the uh, Edgemax OS from that core. ViOS is also a fork from the community version of Viata. It does not have a graphical interface. It is strictly a command line system and that's how you would have to configure it. So without any more of my blabbering, let's get started. All right, I've already got the start of a VM set up. The memory is configured, the virtual optical disk, the ISO image has been set up. Two ethernet adapters are present. And so we'll go ahead and boot the machine and get started with the initial install. So while that's happening, I just want to make a note that the requirements for this are pretty low. You can use an 8 gig uh, drive, 512 megs of RAM, and two network cards. We're going to use the live AMD64 ViOS uh, image to boot from. And this actually boots up pretty quickly. At the login prompt, the default is username ViOS, password ViOS, lowercase for both. As you can see, this is running version 4.14-26 uh, of the Linux kernel. This is the uh, ViOS 1.2 this is the rolling release in the testing uh, part of the website so if you want to grab this image it's pretty small in size and you can play along as I go on through this so to launch the install we'll clear the screen control L to launch the install, you just say install image, and it's going to prompt with a series of questions. Welcome to the ViOS install program. The script will walk you through the process of installing ViOS image on a local hard drive. Continue, yes, enter is for the default. Partition, we're going to just go with auto and ex again accept the default SDA this will completely destroy all data on dev SDA type in yes and again enter to accept the default for just one partition and we'll leave the image name at the default And we'll let it go and it will do its thing. Which one should I copy? Default is fine. Okay, now it prompts us to enter an administrator account password. You enter it twice, it has to match. Uh, which drive should Grub modify? Uh, the boot partici partition on uh, SDA is the default. It's going to set up Grub. 
and the install is complete just that fast. Now, unlike other typical Linux distributions, uh, ViOS does not automatically eject the uh, optical disk. So we are going to power it off and you just type power off now and hit enter and it will stop the system. I'll bring my virtual box over, go to settings. and storage and we're going to say removed from virtual drive and then we'll go ahead and restart that and I'll move virtual box out of the way here there we go hit enter to select the default there at the login screen again the default username is by OS and you'll enter the password that you set during the install process and it brings up the standard little prompt there so we'll do control L to clear the screen so ViOS follows along the lines of the Juniper, uh, JunoS uh, philosophy of uh, commands. So we're going to enter first so we can make configuration change. We'll type conf, hit enter. Conf is short for configure. And so we are going to start setting up our interfaces. So we would type set interfaces. They're gonna, it's gonna be an ethernet interface. And we're gonna start with ETH zero. And we're going to have the address assigned by DHCP and we're gonna hit enter and it didn't complain so we're good to go we're gonna say commit to that starting DHCP client on ETH 0 and we'll save that okay if we exit we can do a show interfaces ethernet and hit enter and it will show that the IP address for ETH 0 is 172.16.74.161 which is on my actual home network we're going to set a private address space uh, separately for ETH1 so again we'll go in and we'll type comp and we'll enter uh, set interfaces ethernet ethernet1 address One nine two one six eight two twenty dot one slash twenty four 
commit. Again, it didn't complain. Save. Exit out of configure mode. And again, we can type shell interface ethernet. And it shows the IP addresses for both interfaces. Now, if we want to test that our configuration is good, we can ping a public DNS server. And we are, in fact, able to reach the internet. One more quick thing we'll do before we go, and we'll go back into configure mode, and we'll do set interfaces, ethernet, ethernet zero, and we'll do a question mark for help, and one of our options there is description. And we're going to make the description outside. And if we do the same thing, we'll edit. And we'll do for Ethernet 1, inside. Commit. Save. Exit. Show interface Ethernet. And so it shows our outside and inside descriptions for the two Ethernet interfaces. Please note, at this point, although you can reach the Internet from the router virtual machine itself, it is not yet set up to act like a typical off-the-shelf router for home use. We will go through additional configuration in another video. On that note, I'm Jeremy for Practical IT. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. Feel free to leave comments below, subscribe, and click the bell icon for notifications of future videos. Until next time, I'm Jeremy signing out. Have a great day.